Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Urban Pharmacy Podcast. I'm thrilled to tell you about today's guest. It is Dr. Josh Hellman. We're talking all things Alzheimer's, and uh, you're going to listen to his bio and learn more about him right when the episode gets started. But before we get going, I want to make sure that you know that the Ultimate Vegan Health Bundle is now available for a very short amount of time. From March 1st to March 10th, you can snag over 140 detailed contributions plus ebooks, recipes, uh, courses, masterclasses, plus a few c- coupons for products exclusive to the bundle. And you are going to be able to transform your life for just $50. It is over $8,000 worth of content. And this bundle is vegan. It is also oil-free. And there's a huge focus on health and living a, a lifestyle of wellness. Like I said, the bundle is only available from March 1st through the 10th. So if you are feeling like you need some new inspiration and like you need the reignite button to be hit on your body and your mindset, then this bundle is for you. The bundle, again, sells for only one payment of $49. But if you purchase all the content separately, it would be about $1,000 worth, which is over 99% discount when you include all of the items that are in the bundle. So please don't sit on this amazing exclusive offer. It is just for people like you who want to elevate their health and transform their life through evidence-based nutrition and through healthy living. There's over 100 creators that have joined to be part of this special bundle, including myself and plant-based doctors, raw food enthusiasts, fitness, yoga, and more. You can find a wide range of content in this bundle, and some of the highlights are that everything is new content, plus, again, there's video content, classes, courses, brand new plant-based recipes, and then an exclusive collector spring-themed ebook that has a whole bunch of recipes in there as well to help you really go into 2024 strong. So this bundle is truly an incredible deal. I do not want you to miss it. Please click down in the show notes to grab your bundle before it's gone forever on on March 10th, excuse me, 2024. And without further ado, here is Dr. Josh Hellman. I hope you love this episode. So here we are with Dr. Joshua Hellman. He is a Harvard-trained physician licensed in 14 states, and he has two degrees in biochemistry. And Dr. Josh is board certified by the American Board of Emergency Medicine and the American Board of Lifestyle Medicine and is currently focusing and specializing in reversing and preventing Alzheimer's. And that is actually how I found Dr. Hellman. So we're going to talk about that in this episode. But Dr. Joshua Hellman, welcome to the Urban Pharmacy Podcast. Thanks. It's uh, such a pleasure to be here. Yes. I am so, so happy and thankful that I got to uh, not only come to your talk at the Woodstock Fruit Festival, but also meet you there. Um, Because quite frankly, I didn't know about you yet. And in this, (laughs) in this amazing small, but also huge plant-based, you know, lifestyle and world that we're living in, um, it's always really awesome to find medical professionals and health professionals, integrative health professionals, naturopathic doctors, all of those people. Um, it's always f- awesome to find new people to bring into um, you know, this ecosystem and to also share with the world. So I'm just so thankful. And I will just say, we're going to talk mostly about Alzheimer's today. And okay. something that I saw in your talk, Dr. Hellman, was so fascinating. It was really about like bringing in herbs and bringing in some Chinese medicine um, in in addition to this plant-based lifestyle that we know is so beneficial in preventing and even um, helping to reverse Alzheimer's. So um, before we get into this, I want to just know a little bit more about you. I know that um, I want to know how you went plant-based first off, and then also maybe you have a fun fact that you want to share. Yeah, no, th- th- those are great questions. And wow, how how did I get get into this? Uh, a, a dozen years ago, I had my own health challenges. I was 50 pounds overweight and had high blood pressure. And despite having, you know, two degrees from Harvard and knowing all about biochemistry and, you know, trained as an emergency physician, I couldn't fix myself. 
with traditional treatments. It was just really frustrating. And that's why I started looking like, there's got to be a solution to this. And, and um, yeah, so, so I went to, um, it, it's funny, what, what really, you know, uh, transitioned me to being vegan is there, there's this uh, cruise, I would, this, this vegan cruise I would go on every single year uh, called the Holistic Holiday at Sea. And, um, I, you know, I, I was skeptical the first year I went, but, you know, I, I, you know, with my two degrees in biochemistry, I was able to fact check what, what all the, the different, uh, you know, doctors were saying. And, you know, after the second and third year, yeah, I mean, I, I was hooked. And, but I wasn't one of these people who I heard the message and then, you know, the next day I changed. No, I was like, okay, that's really good about cutting out meat and milk and dairy and cheese, but you know what, let me, let me just start by cutting out meat. You know, what's, what's the least I can do right, right, and, and, and still be healthy. And, and so I played that game, but it took, it took me years, but fortunately it's been like eight years now of, you know, completely, uh, you know, plant-based. Uh, um, but to my point is, I, I think it's more than just that, because as you probably know, you can eat a vegan diet, but it, it's just not good for you if it's all processed foods. Yeah. So, so taking the next step and going to no added salt, oil, and sugar, and I'm not perfect, but uh, I'm pretty good. And, and, and I, I saw huge gains uh, just from that. So a fun fact about me is I, I, I like working at, you know, at, at programs or facilities that are plant-based with, as medical director at Hippocrates, you know, oh. to, to um yeah so i was there for a year and i, I call that kind of a, a vegan bubble because you're just right. you're basically living and around other and working around other people who are just eating plants and then uh working at true north which is a fasting center which is also plant-based and you know being in that bubble it's like it was it was tough leaving that bubble and you know you, you get out to the real world and unfortunately not everyone actually most people have no idea what you're talking about yes oh my gosh well, i we might have mentioned briefly when we when we chatted quickly at the at the festival about maybe how you had worked at woodstock and perhaps at true north but now that you reminded me Hi 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 hippocrates I, oh, that, that was I that was a that was the first woodstock for me <laughs> Oh yes. Um, uh, did I say what's that? I meant Hippocrates and, yeah, yeah. and, um, and true North. So, um, but that's just, that just makes you even more cool. Okay. I will just say <laughs> <laughs> because both of these facilities are so uh, well, at least well known in the plant-based community uh, to be places that people can go to heal. And I think what uh, both of the facilities, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but both of the facilities have so much in common is what you mentioned about the SOS free lifestyle. And that is yeah. actually, actually, let me be clear. So, yeah. so true North definitely supports the SOS free, no added salt oil and sugar. Yeah. Hippocrates does not. In okay. fact, they're, okay. they're a big fan of olive oil. Are they're, they? They're, yeah, they have are. They just, always but, been? Um, I think, I think that's, that's Brian Clement who, who runs the place. That's his argument. It's like, Hey, we've been doing this since the 1950s. And okay. like, why should we, why should we change? And I'm like, well, there, there are published studies now showing that after you eat olive oil, you know, there's damage to your blood vessels, but he wasn't open to that, which is why I'm not there anymore. But, but, uh, but, but no, they're, they're not, you know, and, and in terms of adding, um, adding salt, you know, unfortunately, um, in, in the form of seaweed. I mean, it, Oh, right. yeah. So, so I, so I would not, I, I would not totally call agree. Hippocrates SOS free, but despite that, you know, on, on a daily basis, I would see people with all these chronic diseases get better, right, just right. like I would at uh, true North. So, so okay. yeah, so, I mean, they're, they're, they're different approaches and, and I'm never dogmatic. You have to do it this way. I just, but that's what I love about having worked in different places. I've, I've seen what works and what doesn't work and, and then I can give people options and, 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 and find out what fits in their lifestyle. I love that. Well, regardless if you are trying to heal and, and regardless if you are on the oil side or the non-oil side, just know that just a free, a free little, you know, uh, bump for both of them. The Hippocrates Health Institute is in Florida. The True North Health Institute is in California. I'm pretty sure there's a wait list for both. So if you want to heal, 
go check out both and, and start your healing journey. Um, but okay. So you have experience in this plant-based world. How long have you been living plant-based? I'd say my journey started about 12 years ago, but I, it's been, it's been about eight years since I've been, you know, pure or, you know, not, not cheating. I, I wouldn't, I would never imagine cheating now because from what I know, of it, the higher up you go on the food chain, the higher levels of toxins. So yeah, you know, it's right. the same. It's the same thing, thing. Like you know, there's dirt on the ground. I wouldn't eat dirt, you know, like, unless right. I had a good reason. So it's the same thing with. I just don't. And, and you may realize this too. Like the, the longer you do this, you know, you look at at food and you don't at, at what other people call like I would call junk food, but right. other people would call. Um, food and you're like no that's not for me I'll, I'll give you an example i was at this alzheimer's con reversal conference uh, last week in boca boca raton and one of the the keynote speakers who's an alumna you know famous scientist i was i was talking to her after her lecture on some new molecules for reversing alzheimer's and you know there was, it was a break time and she was going to go over and get some potato chips and she said oh do you want some potato chips i'm like oh no i, I don't eat that because of acrylamide and she, and she knows what acrylamide is. she had no idea that there was high concentrations of acrylamide in potato chips oh well, of course so, 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 so like what, what, what you and may, you and I may understand, you know, is e even among the experts, you know, the scientific yeah. experts who've been, I mean, she was at Harvard the same time I was, you know, 30 years ago, you know, right. it doesn't matter unless you actually look into this. It's, it's not on people's radar screen. Well, why was there even potato chips at the conference in the first place is my question. You know what I mean? But it's just so true. And that I think just, uh, we just need to bring awareness right now. Again, like you said a little bit earlier at the beginning, like vegan does not necessarily mean healthy and vegan. There's so many vegan foods out there these days because there is this huge vegan movement, which is great, but you know, it's great for the animals, great for the environment. But I would say it's, it's, it's absolutely awful for human health, unfortunately. Um, so it's so important to understand how to eat well uh, to prevent these, you know, the heart disease, which is our number one killer, and also Alzheimer's, which is on so many people's radar today. And I want to talk to you more about that. How did you get into, you know, the science of Alzheimer's? Why did you start studying this? And why are you now creating, uh, you know, a place for it? Yeah, so so I I learned about Alzheimer's, unfortunately, as, as a little kid, as a little boy, when my grandmother got Alzheimer's and my, my mom's mom and, and I saw how it devastated, not, not, you know, not just her, but, you know, but, but also the, my, my parents, yeah. and, you know, and, 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 um, and their contemporaries. Cause you know, it, it's not just the stress of taking care of, of your mom, but it's also, Oh wait, if this is happening to her fast forward, okay, maybe 20, 30 years from, from now, this is going to happen to me. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so I, so I grew up, you know, seeing that. And then about six years ago, I started working in Tampa, Florida at an IV clinic where we were reversing Alzheimer's and other causes of dementia with, from like Lyme disease, mold toxicity, and we were getting people better. Now, now it took intensive intravenous therapy for months and months and months, but we were actually reversing this. Wow. And, and then the, the, what, what triggered me to start my own clinic was um, ba basically a, a new FDA approved uh, for compassionate use drug that doesn't have all the side effects of brain bleeds, et cetera. And this past November, I did a summit, had 30,000 people, had a summit on reversing and preventing Alzheimer's and aging. And, you know, I, I could tell, you know, I got 40 of the experts and you know i could tell there there are so many things that people can do they don't need, need to re rely just on medications to prevent and reverse aging and alzheimer's so to me my, my goal now is just to get the information out to as many people as possible which which is why i jumped at the chance to get on your podcast yeah. oh yay well this message really needs to be shared and uh, truth be told, really the only um, thing that I, I really have gotten a lot of my information about Alzheimer's prevention and uh, halt it, you know, halting it and, and then reversal is through the Shirzai's 
Dr. You know, Dina and Aisha Shirzai, and they're also in the plant-based community. Now, I, I want to know from you, why, why do you think that plant-based can actually be uh, a really key part of, of helping to prevent and re reverse Alzheimer's? Like, what are the basics with that? Yeah, so I, I think you have to step back and say, like, what actually causes Alzheimer's? Yeah. And, and, and you know, we, we could talk for a very long time about that, but, but I'll, I'll just boil it down to there are many different causes, say, even 30 to 50 different causes in each person. And, and those are going to be a little bit different person to person. But one, one of the commonalities or is, is uh, specifically toxin exposure. So going back to what I said before is if you're eating at the top of the food chain, it turns out that, that there are these endocrine disruptors, toxins that are fat soluble that hang out in the body sometimes for 10, 20, 30 years, and you are what you eat. So if you're eating from the top of the food chain through something called biomagnification, you have higher toxin levels higher up you go on the food chain if you're eating at the very top of the food chain namely animals or milk or eggs you're going to have much higher levels of these toxins as opposed to if you're eating plants from from the water or the land much lower toxin levels so i think that's going to be one of the big changes and and why plant-based people i mean we know from the studies that the people who eat mainly plants have much lower levels of these toxins. Mm -hmm. And then the corollary is because you are what you eat, if you have lower toxin levels, you're, you're going to have a longer life expectancy and you're going to have fewer of these chronic diseases of aging like Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what does call, cause uh, Alzheimer's? Like what is causing this rapid aging um, outside of these, I mean, you can touch more on toxins as well, but like outside of that. Sure. Well, so, yeah. So, so I'll, I'll just throw some, and, th and this list isn't going to be inclusive because we're talking 30 to 50, but I'll just to give people some ideas um, type it's been called type three diabetes. So okay. insulin, I'm sorry, insulin resistance can be a piece of it. Inflammation is a big piece from, from the AI, from the, machine learning, one of the biggest risk factors for Alzheimer's is actually sleep disorders, not getting into nice deep REM sleep. And um, other, other causes are infections. So parasites, as an example, if you're eating raw fish or certain types of meats, you're at a higher risk of infection than if you're eating plants. And other common causes are low vitamin D levels, thyroid disorders, um, brain trauma can, can, uh, head trauma can, can be part of it. You know, there, there's what so about many. lack of exercise. Sure. Definitely. I mean, we know that exercise is, is a great way to stimulate BDNF, a, a, a growth factor that the brain derived neurotrophic, uh, um, uh, growth factor. So, so yes, we know exercise, not only reverses your biologic clock, but it, it will prevent Alzheimer's. What's also interesting is the biochemical changes of exercise are almost identical to fasting. So, mm -hmm. and, and I don't recommend people fast and exercise at the same time, but you know, I, I would definitely, if you're not exercising, if, if you don't have some type of fasting in your life, I would definitely look at both of those. Yeah. Do you currently fast? Like, do you practice a intermittent fasting I, I do. I, I, um, you know, I, ha I haven't done uh, like a 10 day water fast for, for like a year now, but, but I, uh, I, I tried, I personally, I tried to have a feeding window that starts around noon and goes to maybe, you know, six or seven or 8 PM. So mm -hmm. I try to skip breakfast and the, you know, I find the, the more you do it, the easier it gets. And, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that there's, and I'm just asking because this is the way that I do it. And I have, I feel like I've seen some, some validity to um, doing it the other way. So like eating it earlier and cutting it off earlier for circadian rhythm purposes. And um, like, what do you think about that? Do you think it really matters. I mean, have you seen any science supporting that maybe eating earlier would actually be more beneficial? I, I have, but I, to, to my mind, whatever works in your lifestyle, yeah. that, 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 that doing it is so much more important than, like, right. for example, if you're only going to do one meal a day, right. 
you know, if, if that meal happens to be at six in the morning at 6 PM, I don't think it matters as much as that you actually do that. Right. Yeah. And can you talk about autophagy? Sure. Autophagy is, it's a Greek word. Auto means self and phagy means eating. It's, it's basically the, the concept that the, the body can recycle proteins and other uh, constituents in cells, it can recycle it by eating itself. So for example, one of the benefits of fasting is that your body will, um, be- because there are no other energy sources, will start relying on and recycling proteins and other building blocks that are, um, that, that are currently misformed so mm-hmm. that when you end the fast, your, your body releases stem cells and you can actually build new proteins. So mm-hmm. autophagy is, is a good thing. You want, you, you want your body to be constantly recycling, you know, getting, taking the, the misformed and, 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 and defective proteins and other building blocks and, and having, having uh, new ones uh, being rebuilt. Okay, before we get too far into this episode, I've got to mention Oliveda once again, my very favorite waterless beauty brand. This is beauty from the inside out and outside in. I came across this brand about five months ago. It is based out of Europe and has been there for 20 years with great efficacy and a return rate of customers about 85% of them return back. And you don't want to know why. It's because this skincare and these ingestibles lend results. They give you a boost of vitamin C. They give you antioxidants galore. Everything is based on the olive leaf extract from Oliveda versus being based on water and preservatives, which is what I was selling before without even knowing that these ingredients can be inflammatory to the skin. So when you are using a water-based product, again, it has to have a good amount of preservatives added to it, which can cause inflammation. I don't want to have to promote anything like that. I want to promote to you something that's going to work, that's bioactive, that is packed with antioxidants and nutrients that are going to be absorbed well into your skin and that you are going to get wonderful results from. I want you to get the most bang for your buck. I want you to feel better from within, and I want you to feel more confident when you look at yourself in the mirror. That is exactly what Oliveda has done for me and so many other people. Now, I want to invite you to come along and be a consultant with me if you are really intrigued by this brand, or you can simply purchase. If you have no idea where to start, just take the quiz. It will recommend six products that can be used topically and internally that will help you to boost your gut health, help reduce inflammation, and help to make your skin radiate from the outside in and inside out. If you purchase two of the products from the recommended quiz results, you will receive a free full-sized eye product immediately with your purchase. In addition, again, there's an opportunity here because this brand is brand new to the United States. So it's been in Europe for 20 years. They decided to come over to Europe. It's ground floor. And if you have been following me for any length of time, you know that I love direct selling. I love to be able to make money from home as I am a homemaker, I am a homeschooler, I'm a nutritionist, and I I wear a lot of hats, and I like to be able to make money and make an impact at the same time. That is what this Waterless Beauty brand has done for me, and I hope that it can transform your life financially or with your confidence by using the products, by sharing the products. Any way that you get involved is amazing. So click down in the show notes below. You can join me as a consultant and earn money and make an impact, or you can simply start buying and get the glow up. Support your gut, reduce the inflammation, stop using water-based skincare and hair care and body care, and switch over to Waterless Beauty from Oliveda. All right, back to the show. And that would pretty much be the main reason why we would want to practice a, a form of fat, like of fasting. And fasting can be so many done so many ways. How, do you know, Dr. Hellman, when, how quickly can we get into this autophagy? Yeah. B- before I answer that, I, yeah. it's not just for autophagy. I mean, there sure. are, um, I think one of the, one of the other key benefits of, of fasting is that you're not overwhelming our metabolic system with too many calories. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you think back to, if you think back to our ancestors, 
um, they um, didn't have access to all this food and we're, we're just, we're not designed to constantly be, you know, eating like um, our, our society kind of promotes it with the advertising on TV and everything available, <clears throat> available. So to answer your question about how long does it take for autophagy to actually start? Um, I, I think, you know, just skipping breakfast, you're going to get a little bit of autophagy. The same thing with ketosis. You know, you may get, have a little bit of ketosis, you know, if you skip breakfast, right. uh, but, but, you know, the deep ketosis I would normally see uh, after uh, two to three days of a water fast. Um, yeah. So, so, but, but, you know, that's not a reason not it's to say like, well, I'm going to be either perfect or nothing. No, this is, you know, where, yeah, you're, you're, um, and frankly, that's a reason why you want to get seven to eight hours of good sleep a night, because that recycling process really only happens when you're resting. And if you're only resting, sleeping three or four hours a night, the autophagy process isn't really going to happen as well. So, okay. So if we, if, if one of the main factors that is, let's kind of move on back to this sleep thing, as okay. we kind of put all of this together. So if people can Okay. If people can get into a good sleep pattern, they're going to be detoxing more effectively, which is one of the, it's very important to prevent Alzheimer's, right? Because of the fact that what we're seeing with Alzheimer's patients, right, is that there is this bioaccumulation of toxins within the body that can either be caused by the environment, but can also be caused by ourselves because we're not giving our body the the time to recycle and to detox and we're not resting well right so it all it all works together which is why you're probably so passionate about being in lifestyle medicine and showing people that it's not just one thing or the other but this all pulls together um so importantly now can you tell me exactly what's happening with alzheimer's like what's happening in the brain um, in, in this, like at a cellular level. Sure. So, so to get, be specific, we normally see what are called amyloid and tau plaques in different parts of the brain and, and different parts, you know, di different patients will have different parts of the brain affected. And that's why I normally recommend getting a PET scan of the brain. So you can actually image and see the areas where these plaques are accumulating. And, these plaques are, they're like a scab. They're the body's way to heal injury, specifically the brain heal injury. And one of the interesting sources is infection. If you have a brain infection, um, amyloid is actually, actually antibacterial. So it makes perfect sense for the brain to say, well, there's, there's some infection here. Let's go ahead and fight it. And yeah, so that's, that's one of the things that's going on with, with, you know, specifically Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. Now, from, from a treatment standpoint, you know, Big Pharma has made many different, you know, had done like 70 different trials of drugs to specifically block the amyloid. And, and the initial, it hasn't, it hasn't worked very well. Mm -hmm. So there, there are nuances to this. I think it's, it's mainly inflammation that if we can tap down, we can, decrease and, and help actually reverse Alzheimer's. So what are some of the early signs that people can start to look for in their loved ones or in themselves um, to get a grip of this horrible disease at an early stage? Sure. So I, I would, you know, we're all going to not necessarily have perfect recall of, of everything, but, you know, if, if you if you're in a place you're like I can't remember where I am or I you know it, it's one thing if you know you misplace your keys but if you're misplacing them several times a day mm -hmm. that that's a warning sign if you um, what we're looking for are changes right I mean if if you could remember um, you know if you normally know Stacy's name and now oh I can't remember her name uh, so we're basically looking for changes in memory changes in behavior, you know, and um, not being able to operate uh, equipment or a machine or, or 
th- things that should be straightforward. We're basically looking, we're looking for changes. It, it can be tricky though because people h- try to hide this initially. I think basically because of embarrassment. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'll hear about someone elderly who specifically doesn't want to drive because they're worried that they won't be able to uh, find their way home or doesn't want to leave the house because they're afraid if they take a walk, they won't be able to, to, to go home. And, and it's good that they're afraid of it, but we need to get to the underlying thing of, okay, so why, why is it that you're, you won't, you won't be able to find your way home? Yeah. So what are some of the lifestyle factors? I mean, we kind of talked about like what's causing it lifestyle wise. And again, you said there's a huge list of things that can be, you know, in, in direct correlation to, um, kind of causing Alzheimer's, like what are some of the lifestyle things that we can start doing today to prevent this disease? Because I, I, like you said, and like, uh, um, Robbie Barbero of Mastering Diabetes said, I just interviewed him, like he, he's saying, you know, like, even though this type three diabetes, like, isn't a medical term yet, it's, it's being thrown out there. So there's a lot to do with blood sugar, right? Like blood sugar regulation and, and insulin, um, increasing our insulin sensitivity. But like, outside of that, like, what can we do to, to prevent this? Because it's just, it's growing rapidly, right? I mean, the Alzheimer's is just, it seems like it's just getting up there with heart disease. Yeah. So another key piece of lifestyle medicine is a sense of community being around other people. I can't explain it, but I, I just, I know our ancestors were, we're, we're designed to be around other people. And it's, it seems like, you know, when, when we're with more people, it actually stimulates the brain. You know, if, if you think about like, if, if you're at a dinner table with, you know, five other people, you know, just the brain power to not only talk to those people, but anticipate what they're going to say next. And yeah, so I, I think there's something about if, if you're not part of a community, find one mm-hmm. that, that that's, that's important. And, you know, there, there are definitely, I'm, I'm a fan of certain supplements that people can do uh, specifically. I like um, omega-3 fatty acids specifically from algae. Mm-hmm. So, so plant-based uh, omega-3s. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so di- diabetes, insulin, insulin resistance is a piece. It's not the only piece. And I think all these things are, are definitely additive, you know, part of it, it's a vascular problem. If you're, if your blood vessels are, are blocked with fatty plaques, mm-hmm. um, if, if you're not delivering, you know, oxygen to the brain, that the neurons there can't function. So there's, there's, yeah. How do we accumulate fatty plaques? How do we avoid accumulating? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Western high stress, we could talk about stress. Yeah, stress. Is- stress, stress, stress is definitely one thing that we want to, to uh, minimize in order to prolong our life and, and reverse and prevent Alzheimer's. But, you know, from, from the studies, modern Western life, the high fat uh, diet, the animal based diet, um, high cholesterol, you know, our bodies make enough cholesterol. We don't need external sources, but if you're eating the typical American diet, your those, those fats are going to deposit in blood vessels throughout your body, including the ones in your heart and in, in the uh, carotids that go to the brain. So, and, and this doesn't happen overnight, but I mean, if you look at autopsy studies, this actually starts you know, in 10 year olds and, and younger kids, but it, but it, you know, the first 10 years, it might be a little fatty streak. And then after a couple of decades, you get heart, the, the body tries to heal this. And that's when you get hardening calcification. And eventually, you know, the, these pipes, they, they start, they stop, um, they go from a hundred percent down to 10 and five and one, you know, the, the, so it's a gradual process. It's, um, it's when when you get a quick going from a fatty plaque that breaks, you can go from a 50% blockage to 100% within a couple minutes, and that's when people have heart attacks and strokes. So you, you're you're as healthy as your blood vessels. Uh, a famous English uh, physician Sydenham said that I think in the 1600s, and it's true. So so I, I would would try to optimize your diet and other lifestyle thing, you know, choices 
including minimizing stress. And, and to minimize stress, whether that's meditation, whether it's exercise, whether it's you know journaling, what, whatever works for you is what you should be doing. Yeah. And um, what about gratitude and reflection? I know that that's a pillar of lifestyle medicine. Has this been integrated that you've seen in any, you know, Alzheimer's studies or anything like that to show benefit? Yeah, I, I, I have seen some studies on, on gratitude and I think not just gratitude, but also optimism. Mm. And I mean, there's studies showing that people who are optimistic about the future actually live longer. Right. And so it, it works both ways. Yeah. But, but I don't, I wouldn't, if you're hearing this and saying like, I'm not optimistic and I have no gratitude, <laughs> therefore I'm, I'm really pissed off because like, no, this is, I think this is a natural side effect. Once mm. you actually get things aligned that, um, and once you decrease the level of inflammation in your brain, right. I find, I find depression, all these bad thoughts and right. feelings go away. And, and what, what replaces them are gratitude and, and, and healthy emotions like that. Yeah. I know that, um, it's, it's definitely talked about so much in the lifestyle medicine world, uh, about, you know, and Dr. Dean Ornish really talks a lot about like gratitude and reflection and, um, and he does a lot of meditation and, but again, like Dr. Hellman is saying here, we, we have to knock the inflammation through all of these lifestyle factors, through the stress management, through the better sleep, through the whole food nutrition, specifically focusing so much on these polyphenol rich plants that help to reduce the inflammation and the fiber that helps to sweep out the deep, you know, the, the toxins that we're accumulating, it all just goes together. And if it seems overwhelming, if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, he's saying so many things, just know that one little choice every single day will compound and make a difference over time in your life. So um, I want to know from you, I want to know now a little bit more, um, Dr. Hellman, about some of the specific herbs and supplements that you do like, I know that you mentioned super briefly that you do like some supplements, but in your talk at Woodstock Fruit Festival, you were talking about some cool herbs that I know I've heard of, some adaptogenic herbs too, um, that can help our body with lots of different things, right? With stress, with inflammation. Um, can you tell us about some of those? I can try. I mean, I know I, I had my top 10 list at, at that yeah. time. Um, yeah, let, let me just, and, and I'm, I'm also a big fan of essential oils. Wow. I, I don't know if you, you came to that lecture, but, uh, uh, so, so where to start? I would, I would recommend, uh, Bacopa. I love rosemary mm -hmm. and I also love Spanish sage. Cool. I, I think all of those are brain protective and whether, whether you want to take them orally or through it as an essential oil. Um, yeah, I think, I think that those are a, a good place, a good place. Bacopa, to Bacopa. Um, so that is also known as water hyssop. Um, yeah. And so are you telling people to take that in a capsule form or, or a extract, like a tincture? Uh, either one I think would be fine. Yeah. Okay. And um, also what are some of your top essential oils? Are you saying to use them, Internally, are you saying to use them on top on our, on top of our skin, or to diffuse them, or can you? I, I think I think all those are are appropriate. Now, there's some essential oils you don't want to take internally, right. but I'd say before you start taking essential oils, make sure you understand the source, mm -hmm. because if if you're going for the cheapest essential oil you can get on Amazon or Walmart, etc., my experience looking at the analysis is most of them are not from the plants. They're from petroleum that's been modified in a lab to, for, for like the, the major, for one of the components. And that's normally, I, I certainly wouldn't, I would try to stay away from that. So as long as you know that the essential oil you're, you're taking is pure and doesn't have all this other stuff, or, you know, in it, then, then I, I think it's, it's fine um, to take orally. Now, like tree oils, you normally don't want to take internally, mm -hmm. but so I, I would look it up before you take it internally. But, um, you know, something like peppermint mm -hmm. uh, or spearmint can be a great way to, to boost the brain. Mm -hmm. um, vetiver 
Vetiver, I find help. Have you heard of Vetiver? I love it so much. I have it right here. And um, I'm trying to go from like a clean, natural deodorant to just this new thing that I'm using. It's called Poetic Pick. Coke Poetic Pits Underarm Charm. It's literally mm-hmm. just essential oils. And I'm really just trying to give my my pits the chance to detox fully. I haven't been using an- antiperspirant for years because of the aluminum and other things, fragrance and stuff like that. But it has vetiver in it. And vetiver is one of my favorite essential oils. I love it so much. Right. So so the interesting thing about vetiver is it's super viscous. It's super thick. Yeah. So if you, if you happen to have a bottle just with vetiver oil... I normally recommend inverting it just so you actually get some uh, on your finger and then you could just put it under your tongue. Um, I find I, I normally give patients a choice to, with like ADHD, ADD type symptoms. Hyperactivity is a, is a way to calm the brain. And uh, I tell them like, do, do you want Vivance? They both have two Vs. You want Vivance or do you want Vetiver? Most people wow. are willing to start with a, a plant uh, first. So <laughs> wow. tell me more about your, what you're doing in Florida and your, your clinic and your practice and what you're building for the future. Yeah. So, so right now I'm in the process of setting up a clinic in South Florida with the express purpose of reversing Alzheimer's disease. And the plan is to layer on basically everything we talked about from lifestyle medicine, you know, reducing stress, eating the correct things, taking the right supplements, you know, reversing other diseases. So in specifically offering this new FDA approved uh, drug for compassionate use to the general public, this, this, this new drug no one has heard about and probably won't be released for another six years. But fortunately, the FDA said, you know what, we're, we're not going to make people wait another six years because the results have been amazing just with one dose of this IV medication that goes in after over an hour. So I, I definitely have an integrative pro- practice. I'm not dogma like you have to do it this way. You have to do it that way. You know, it's like, great. Let's say that this is ancient Chinese medicine. That's great. But why don't we add some stuff to it? You know, they, there have been some advances in the last couple of thousand years. You know, why, why don't we use some of those uh, to... Um, to put to put it together, especially if you're trying to reverse, you know, someone because even even with someone with mild cognitive impairment with Alzheimer's, you know, they're not quite right. It right. turns out that they've. That's one of the scary things about Alzheimer's is normally the process of destruction and causation happens 30 years in advance, right. and but the first 15 or 20 years you may not know anything about it. Right. So, so to me, yeah, you, you, you got to put it all together. Wow. That's awesome. This is, this is so good. And, um, now I'm thinking, I, you know, my grandma had Alzheimer's. Now I know that we can say, oh, these things run in the family, but really a lot of these lifestyle diseases are because of the lifestyle choices that we're making. Right. So I'm trying not to play the victim card and say, well, I'm going to have it. Um, so I'm trying to do what I can to not have it, but I'm thinking I want to go down and get that IV, even though I don't have, <laughs> even though I don't have the markers right now. Maybe, maybe I do. Hey, I forget some things. So. Well, I, I mean, yeah. in, until you have a diagnosis of dementia, yeah. unfortunately, the FDA won't won't let me give that to you. But you raise a good point. If you have a family history, I think it makes sense for you personally to find out what your APOE, it's a genetic risk, right. your APOE, if you have the APOE4 and if you do, if you have one or two copies, not to freak you out and make you worried, but but we now know that let's say you do have one or two copies of this APOE4, there's things you can do about it. You can actually, you will, would, would need higher doses of this omega-3, okay. but, but, but it makes sense. Like, okay, I know about it. Oh, I need to double up my dose of omega-3. Oh, and by the way, yeah, maybe I should be taking a supplement like creatine, which which we know we now know is a neurotransmitter. Uh, creatine, you know, I recommend people work up to say five grams orally a day of of creatine. So, it's so funny yeah, I it's heard about creatine um, because I'm yeah I'm in this like raw challenge right now, and we're all eating raw for Lent after Woodstock, okay. and there's other wow. people in this group and you know, I'm doing 95%. I might have some of my Hawaiian purple sweet potatoes, but um, anyways, I was hearing from one of the gals in there that she heard 
even the benefits for women, you know, a lot of people link creatine just for men, but um, also for women as well. So that's something that I want to look into. Right. And, uh, and it's new information. We, 95% of the creatine is in your muscles. And yeah, if you're a bodybuilder, yeah. But, but we now know that creatine is also a neurotransmitter. 5% of it's in the brain in your body. And, and you can make a huge difference uh, at, by supplementing with it. Well, I might start taking that. I'm, I might start taking that. And then also, we, I was going to wrap it up, but I have one more question because now I remember. I'm telling you, my, my mind is going. No, I, I, have, <laughs> I have a lot of things I want to ask, but um, you mentioned nitric oxide. I think that nitric oxide is a lot of doctors will call it the mir miracle molecule, um, you mentioned people take it. Do you take Cardio Miracle? Is that the I one? do. I'm, I'm okay. a fan of Cardio Miracle. I've been taking it for six years. Okay. Um, nitric oxide is important for people to take because it is a gas that opens up blood vessels. Right. And your nitric oxide levels in your blood vessels go down as you go get older than, say, 20 or 25. Right. So, yeah, yeah go ahead. And what do you think about fluoride uh, interacting with the enzyme that create helps to create nitric oxide. Yeah, no, no, it does. And and that's why I would recommend that you not use fluoridated toothpaste or, or um, toothpaste or mouthwash. We know fluoride is, um, is uh, toxic to the brain. You know, kids ra you know, raised with water or other sources of fluoride have lower IQs. Right. That's a, that we, we know that it should not be something added to the water. Should in not my opinion. be in the water. No, I, I don't think it should. No. And uh, but you raise a good point. Half of the nitric oxide is produced in the mouth. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're using fluoridated mouthwash or other things in the mouth, you're going to kill the bacteria in your mouth that produce the nitric oxide. Yeah, and that's another reason why it's so important to chew your greens, which I definitely have a hard time doing. I will say, I just like to chew like once or twice and and swallow my food. I'm a really bad chewer. So uh, maybe blending your greens uh, or taking it. But, 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 but if you blend your greens, it's the yeah. same issue because you've blended them, you know, instead of down the hatch, you're not well, well, it's, instead. Of, so instead of just slurping it down, take a little slurp, swish and, it in your mouth before you. Um, does that have well, to do with salivary amylase? I mean, does it have to do with amylase? Is that what it is? Or do you know? I mean, I mean, I mean amylase is a, um, just an enzyme that breaks down sugar. It's in the mouth. It's also in, in your, in your uh, stomach and other parts of the gut. No, I, I don't think it's, okay. the, no, okay. it, it's the concept that you have bacteria. You have some good bacteria in your mouth and your tongue that will actually take the nitrates um, and, and produce the nitric oxide from them. Yeah. I can't remember what that enzyme is called. Now I need to look it up. I, I just interviewed Dr. Esselstyn and he was talking about it and I, it just brought back the importance of educating the people about fluoride and not using it. So switch to hydroxy appetite toothpaste and definitely filter your water. Um, oh, yeah. de 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 definitely. And the, and the enzyme may be uh, INOS uh, nitric oxide synthetase. Would, yeah, would I think be, that's would, probably what it was. Actually, Would be my, would be my guess. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have one more question for you and then sure. I'll let you go. Um, I ask a lot of my guests this and I want to know your thoughts. What does holistic living mean to you? Wow. So the word holistic means whole. So holistic living is living a life that's complete where you're willing to um, have, have a broad view, not be, you know, uh, you know, focusing on just one thing, just have a, be willing to be open to all the different areas of abundance in the world. Mm. Oh, I love that. Oh, abundance is one of my favorite words. So that's a great, <laughs> it's a great way to end this um, episode. Dr. Hellman, thank you so much for your time. And thank you for sharing your insight, your wisdom and your knowledge with the people. I really, really appreciate it. And I know so many will too. So I appreciate you and take care. Thanks, Stacey. It was, it was great talking.